In the previous video, I showed you how to test for statistical significance, main effects, and interactions in a 2x2 two two factorial within subjects ANOVA. And it was identified that the main effects were statistically significant and the interaction was statistically significant. However, as I write in the textbook, you don't know for sure if you can interpret the main effects until you carry on with some extra analyses relevant to simple main effect analyses, and I'm going to do that in a future video. This video is dedicated to understanding the nature of an interaction. And the best way to do that is to plot the means in a chart. It's going to be very difficult to do so without a chart. So the chart of choice is a line chart, which is a plot of the means, and the variables are connected together with a line. How you can do that in SPSS is going to analyze general linear model repeated measures. Now I have to redo the work I did in the previous video because I closed SPSS and started it back up again. Now for you, if you had already done the factorial repeated measures ANOVA, you would have these variables already within SPSS. So the first factor is plants 2 and cleanliness 2 levels as well. Click define and I'm going to just put the variables in just like I did for the factorial repeated measures ANOVA. The key thing that you want as an extra option is plots. And you can see that in this version of SPSS, this is what the window looks like. And you need to put each variable as either a horizontal axis or a separate lines axis. You do not use separate plots. That would be for a three-way factorial ANOVA, not a two-way factorial ANOVA. This has only got two independent variables. So I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to put plants in the horizontal axis and cleanliness in the separate lines box and click Add. Now that's going to create a line chart. Now SPSS allows you to include error bars if you want error bars, but I'm not going to include them here because two reasons. One, it will make the chart a little bit cleaner to use and, and interpret. And secondly, the 95% confidence intervals that SPSS is going to put here are not actually adjusted for the shared variance across time. And as I argue in the textbook, and other people as well, the confidence intervals should take into account the within subjects factor na nature of the data. I show in a separate video how you can do that properly. So the next plot I'm going to create is just the flip of that. I'm going to put cleanliness there and separate lines for plants. Now, you would only use one of these charts to help explain the interaction. You wouldn't use both. But I'm putting both so that I can evaluate it and determine myself what is the best way to interpret this interaction. So click on Continue and click OK. Now SPSS is creating the chart and it'll be right at the bottom of the output. And you can see that it doesn't really look as nice as what I reported in the textbook. But this is the first chart. This is with plants. This is with yes plants, no plants. So one and two. Again, you have to look at your design. Plants one, yes there are plants, and then we got no plants. That's for two. So you always have to go back up here and look at the numbers to figure out which one is which. Because SPSS doesn't tell you here. So we have plants one, which is yes, there are plants in the office. And then we have here plants no. And we can see that there is an effect, probably a significant main effect that can be interpreted, but I'd have to do the simple main effect analyses. But it looks like both of them are dropping. When there is no plant in the office, it looks like there's a statistically significant difference. But what I'm interested in here is the interaction. So the drop from plant to no plant looks like it's more substantial for the clean or tidy office. Look how much of a drop there is from this point to that point. And then you compare it to these two points. This is the nature of the interaction here. The magnitude of the difference is different from plants to no plants for the tidy office relative to untidy. So this is probably a pretty decent way to help interpret the nature of the interaction. Plants, yes, appear to have an effect on the comfortability ratings of the office. And yes, the tidiness also seems to have an, an effect. Again, I have to do simple main effect analyses to really find out for sure if I can interpret these main effects. But the key point for the interaction is that the magnitude of the effect of, say, plants on an office is unequal across tidy and untidy offices. The magnitude of the effect of plants is more substantial for the tidy office. Look how much bigger the difference is. From no plants to plants is a pretty steep incline relative to 
plants to no plants when the office is untidy. So again, the magnitude of the difference is different across the two levels of the independent variable. Here's the other chart, another way to look at it. So in this case, it's cleanliness going from yes, tidy to untidy. And then we've got plants, the bl blue line. And again, there's a precipitous, a more precipitous drop, a more substantial difference going from tidy to untidy when there is a plant in the office versus not. Another way to think about it is it looks like when you put a tidy office with a plant, the magnitude of the effect that has on comfortability ratings is above and beyond what you would expect. It's almost like a disproportionate effect when you get both of those conditions aligned. A tidy office with a plant in it is a more substantial effect than you'd expect. If there was no interaction whatsoever, we might expect plants in a tidy office to might have a mean about here. That would be an incline comparable to this incline here. But it's not. It's actually all the way up here. So it's a disproportionate effect. There's something a bit magical that happens when you can get tidy and plants together. It's above and beyond what you'd expect from a purely main effect result. So that is how you can interpret a main, an interaction with plots. Almost essential, to be honest with you. I think I would choose it's up to you to choose which one you think is best telling the story. Uh, I think both of them are about equally good in this case here. I, it's a bit of a toss up which one might be obviously better. Now so the last thing I'm going to point out is you can flip this around if you wanted to. I've been talking about an incline and an increase, but really it's kind of a decrease here, isn't it? If you go from left to right, which is what we usually do in Western cultures. What I could do is simply flip the variables around. So this is what the data look like in the original data file that is associated with this book chapter. But what you could also do is simply flip things around so that no plants untidy is the first variable and no plants tidy is the second variable. So compare that with the original data file, plants tidy, plants untidy. I flipped it around. I've simply copied and pasted the, the same variables into a different order. And by doing so, I can easily create a new repeated measures graph. I'll have to redo this again. So what do we have? Plants, plants and cleanliness. And put these variables here. They're exactly the same variables. I've just reordered them. So on, now I'm going from no plants to plants and untidy to tidy. So as the number increases, the positivity or the favorableness of the characteristic also increases. Go to plots, and I'm going to put plants in the horizontal axis, cleanliness in the separate lines, and I'm going to flip it around again and click Add and click Continue and click OK. This produces exactly the same results. I'm not going to get any different F values. It's all going to be the same exact thing. What's different is that now I can talk about increases from left to right. So in this case here, going from no plants to yes plants and cleanliness is two, I can talk about an increase going from left to right. It's exactly the same effect. I've just flipped it around. And that's perfectly legitimate. Same thing here. Now I'm going from left to right, and it's a positive slope. It's upward. It's increasing. And now I can more naturally talk about an increasing trend across the presence or the absence of the characteristic. So that is how you can create a plot of the means in SPSS with a line chart uh, to help you interpret an interaction.